What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We are back at Insurance Auto Auctions here at Oklahoma City for another walk around. Let's jump into this today with number one on my list. I know trucks, 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 trucks. It's Oklahoma, folks. We have a lot of trucks here. And ever since seeing Swamp Boy's Garage working on theirs, I kind of got to thinking up about the Toyota Tacoma again. Now, we did own one for like five or six days and I sent it straight back to the dealership. I lost 10 grand on that truck. I couldn't do it. I bought it for my fiance. It was like her dream truck. She always wanted one. And then she took it out for a extended drive and found out she absolutely hated it. When she told me this, I took it out myself and I drove it and I hated it. Uh, neither one of us liked the truck at all. We took it back to the dealership and we traded it in on something else. With that said, I don't have a problem. I'm not hating on the Tacoma. Just personally, for me, I don't care for the truck. Now, if you guys haven't seen Swamp Boy's Garage, it is a father and son channel where they tackle projects. They did, hell, those guys went out and they did a Tesla Model 3. They've, they've done a Denali pickup truck where they fixed it from scratch. They lifted it. They've done, I think, a Toyota Camry, Toyota Corolla. Now they're on to the Tacoma. These guys do some amazing work. They have great videos. Go check out their build on their Tacoma. I'll put a link directly below this video. Now on with this one. She took some slight front end damage. It doesn't look that bad to me, but I could be wrong. The frame rail extension is not even touched right there. The frame rail looks straight. Obviously the core support on this is done. They got a little lucky on theirs. Their core support was not crunched in this one is could you maybe pull it out and save it maybe possibly but i'm gonna say probably not you're probably gonna need to redo the core support on this now as most of good lord that is heavy wow i can't believe they don't have hood struts on this are you serious Ugh. that sucker weighs a ton either that or we've got a damaged hinge um how bad is it well, it's definitely down below. This is this is where the damage is on the core support. Could you bang it out? Like I said, maybe you could. It wouldn't be right, but maybe. Just maybe you could get lucky enough to bang all this out without having to re-weld everything. Um, it doesn't look that bad to me. I mean, cosmetically, it looks a little rough, but the, the damage underneath, which is usually where you find most of your your problems it doesn't look bad it really doesn't now this fender is all damaged the front bumper headlight assembly fog light all all of this it's all gone we got damage to the suspension down here as well that's all plastic ah she got a lift kit on her uh she's got a lift kit on her fabtech they didn't go cheap either they used some good parts there all right so she's been lifted she's got some custom suspension she's got some custom wheels kmc wheels we've got some ridge grappler nittos uh 285 70 17s got the running boards this door is boy i it's tough you could pay somebody to maybe straighten that back out but you probably should replace the door uh the fender the door it's gonna be a little bit in parts but if nothing else is torn up it's a trd 4x4 sport this doesn't look bad this 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 does not look this is doable totally doable okay assuming we don't have any airbags blown uh because those can get quite expensive all right so what's the mileage on this i wonder let's take a peek it's supposedly a run and drive how's the interior on her uh, it's very small. I forgot how small these were. It smells good, though. That's a nice change. It's got the sunroof. Hopefully this door doesn't... Well, I mean, it's already damaged. Oh, it's got power, too. We don't even have to jump it. She's got some miles. 121,000 miles. Wow. Boy, somebody, somebody used her. Uh-oh. Oh. Someone stole the key. Someone stole the key. That make <laughs> I can't express how angry that makes me. Um, obviously, if they took the time to put this band around the steering column, there was a key. Um, and it's listed as a run and drive, so there was a key. Somebody was changing the oil, which is nice. Somebody was taking care of it. 
but somebody jacked the key. How great that is of them. How nice. Yeah, key's gone. These are just all the places I tend to look. Uh, but if the key was up front with us, she should have started. Someone jacked the key. You know, never mind. I, I, I shouldn't get into it. Uh, it really pisses me off. It really pisses me off. Not just for me. Like, seriously, not just for me. Chances of me buying this truck are slim to none. I'm really not all that interested in it. It looks like an easy fix to me. But let's say, let's say that I took a risk. I saw this online. I was like, you know what? That doesn't look bad. I got to have this. It says it runs and drives. It's got keys. And I bid on it and I win it. And they deliver the car to my house. Then I find out it's got no key. It's got no key. Someone jacked the key. Now, instead of getting to work on the truck, now I've got to get somebody to program a key. I got to get a key made for it, which means you got to get it loaded up. It, Come on, man. Why why do that to people? I mean, I, I guess I kind of understand that they think it's going to get them a better deal. Well, I tell you what, that ain't right. <laughs> that gap ain't right. I think that fender apron might be a little off there. Anyway, it still looks like a relatively easy repair. The hood's damaged. So you're going to replace that hood. And I guarantee you that hinge over there, that hinge is toast. That's part of the reason for this massive gap, aside from the fender being peeled back. Uh, that That is off. This whole hood is way off. Okay. Thieves. I, I just hate them. And, and I, I don't use the word hate lightly, but I, I really, really hate thieves. Somebody's going to get this truck, and somebody's going to be really disappointed that the first thing they have to do is spend more money on something that they shouldn't have had to spend money on because somebody wanted to come out here and jack the key. They're probably going to sell it on eBay or something. You know, they're probably going to sell it. It's probably worth something on eBay. So they're going to sell the key fob and screw this person out of their keys. This car, this truck should have been a drop off, start and run. You start working on it and instead they're forced to deal with somebody's somebody's bs i hate it it sucks when you come out here to look at stuff and you find someone jack the key it sucks for you it sucks for the person that's going to buy it and you can't hear it run you can't hear it run anyway if you hate thieves as much as i do drop a comment below and say thieves suck next on my list i have not seen one of these in so long this is a pedal car it's a 95 Geo Tracker. Now, they changed in the later years. I think 96, they were a Chevy Tracker because Chevy took over Geo. They ran with a few cars for a while and then Chevrolet killed the whole lineup. But I have not seen, I've had so many, I've had like three of these. I've had like three of these. I absolutely love these things. They're usually a little, little tiny four cylinder with a stick shift transmission, this top that just kind of comes apart on you. I've always loved these. This thing still has what looks like its original paint. The original graphics. Granted, they're all in really bad shape. Uh, the paint, the clear coat, it's, it's in really rough shape. But you throw a fresh paint job on this. This door's a little banged up too. This you could fix. You threw a paint job on this thing, man, and she would be good to go. Tires are rotted. Completely rotted. Those are toast. She needs some tires too. Man, I love this. I love this. And it doesn't say if it. Ooh. Uh oh. Something went really wrong under this hood. <laughs> I'm gonna guess that's why she was parked. Um. Okay. Well, before we get carried away, let me put this hood prop in. It fell out. Okay. So what do we think happened under here? That's. There's a lot of. Did a battery explode? Was it a, a heater hose? Something, man, something. I, look at that color, that white. It's everywhere. It almost looks like coolant just poof and went all over under this hood. Now, like I said, it doesn't say if it runs or not. It's obviously sat for a long time. She's got very clean oil and it's full. It is full of beautiful oil. It is a manual transmission. You got your old school distributor right there. Does she have coolant? I'm gonna bet she has no coolant. That's gonna be my guess. Oh, she's full, ooh. Now she's got coolant, but there's a lot of floaties in it. It's actually full. 
of coolant. So whatever that is, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, your guess is as good as mine. Let's take a peek at the inside. I, I'm, the more I look at this, the more I want it. The more I want it. I love. Oh, and the pattern on the seats. Oh, I want this so bad, so bad. Look at all the room you got back there. This thing is so cool. Mine, I swear, had seats in the back. I could have swore they had seats back there. I know mine did. I know mine did because I toted my kids around it and they loved it. Stick shift. Yeah. Miles are not bad. E-brake is a little, you know, eh. 90,000 miles on the odometer. Brakes. She's got brakes. Clutch. I think it has a clutch. Guys. And it has a key, right? Somebody didn't steal the key. She's got keys. She's got a whole set of them. House keys, too. This is going to be something that was most likely an estate type of deal. And I love those and I hate them because obviously someone probably moved on, you know. Uh, and that, that that's definitely sad. But this thing is in such good shape inside and out other than needing a full paint job, new stickers, a new top, new tires. It's not sounding like such a good deal anymore. Uh, the top has shrunk. You can... And it's pretty tore up back here as well. <sighs> ah, for, a, for an off-road toy, though, it could be fun. Let's throw a jump on it real quick. Let's see what it does. I've already heard things start beeping inside the vehicle here. I do not expect it to run. I've got a hunch this thing has been parked for a very long time. But I would like to at least hear... Oh, yeah, there's no gas in it. Either that... <laughs> most likely... That empty gas gauge is from a failed sending unit. So, yeah. I was hoping she might fire up, but I'm not going to bet on it. Will she crank? She will crank. You got to do the GM wiggle. She cranks healthy. No sign of fuel, though, and that is not something that I wasn't expecting, all right? I I had a hunch that she's been sitting for many, many years. Will this open? It's probably locked. You got the spare tire cover. I love this. You guys comment below. Tell me if this is something we got to have on the channel. Sniff test, guys. Let's get down in here. Oh, wow. Okay. And that is exactly what I thought. Yeah, the fuel is absolutely rotten. Absolutely rotten. So she's going to need a, few, a new fuel pump, new sending unit. I've never done one on one of these. Uh, where does it even go? Oh, it's over there. I see it. Oh, that's... I don't know how hard that is to do. It's even got a tow hitch and a four pin on her, man. Okay, so... She's full of good old rotten gas. Uh, as long as it's been sitting, that timing belt's gonna need to get done too. Uh, my, while you're at it, while you're in there, you know. Uh, would I replace the water pump? No, I'd replace the belts, of course. Water pump I wouldn't screw with because it's external, easy to get to. Somebody's done plug wires on this, so I'd say it probably had a tune-up recently, so I wouldn't worry about that either. But I would change the timing belt and definitely, you're gonna have to get in there and change that uh, that fuel pump. This one, even though I don't need another project right now, I'm gonna go ahead and put this on my list because I want it really, really bad. Last on my list, an Enterprise vehicle, a 2020 Infinity. <laughs> yeah. Last on my list, a 2020 Infinity QX80, 5.6 liter. How bad is it? It's got some markings on it for damage, but unless there's something else that I'm missing, this doesn't look that bad. We'll go over the damage here in a minute. We're going to just take a quick walk and see if we see anything major or if it's all just a little damage. This thing is so big. I, I This is huge. Obviously, the tires look brand spanking new. The vehicle itself looks great. Now, there's some markings all over it. They've got this right here. I 
I don't know what's going on, but it looks fine to me. They've got a big one right here. Uh, again, I don't see anything wrong with it. So, okay. Um, looks like they were going to trash this light. Can you see anything wrong with this light? If you can, please comment below. Um, this right here, she took a little... A, I wouldn't even... Who cares? I wouldn't... Come on, man. Who cares? It's a little nick. There's a little nick right here, too. That's loose. Um, obviously, the front bumper took a little bit of an impact, but... Nothing serious. What, what else? We got something right here. There's a scratch. There's a little scratch. I don't even know if you guys can see that. It's so tiny. There's a scratch that goes right here. A tiny scratch. Then there's something here, but I don't see anything. There's a tiny little nick, maybe from a rock, that broke this bottom piece right here. And that's the damage. <laughs> so there you go. Um, I, I <laughs> How this is totaled? is beyond me this you know what this this doesn't look totaled this looks like look at those third row seats too beautiful interior smells good this doesn't look totaled this looks like a used car it just it's a used car that's what it is you know it's a used car it's got some bumps and bruises some dings but this is not bad at all she needs a good cleaning on the interior but god this is nice look at that center stack 64,000 miles on the odometer. It's a... <laughs> oh. Somebody did it again, did they? Yeah. So somebody's... I'm going to tell you... <laughs> the Tacoma that we were looking at just a, just a few minutes ago is right there. And just tell me, is it coincidence that cars on this row seem like they're starting to, to miss their keys? Because... That is missing its key, and this is right behind it, and it too is missing its key. There's no key in here. It totally throws off the way I do my video, and it totally screws over somebody that buys this. I don't know how much keys are for these, but I'm going to venture to guess that they're probably pretty pricey. You know, uh, it's an Infinity. I know it's a Nissan, but remember, it's an Infinity. Uh, and Nissan, no, I mean, I'm sorry, Infinity is going to charge, what do you think, three, five, six hundred dollars for the fob and programming for this? That's a shame. And, and I know it had a key. I know it had a key. Shows the mileage right there, and it shows runs and drives. Keys, check mark. That check mark, that means yes. That means this car should have ran and it had keys in it, and somebody, somebody stole them. And, I, and I, I've been saying this for years, guys. I've been doing these walkarounds for years now. And, and I'm going to tell you something. I've been saying it. I'm going to say it again. People coming out here and jacking the keys out of these things is going to lead to ultimately nobody will be able to come out here and look at vehicles anymore. At some point, they're going to get fed up with it and they're going to just say it's all online only. You can't preview them in person. And that way they can guarantee that people aren't going to jack parts off of the cars. So because we kind of got screwed on the keys on that one, I decided we're going to go ahead and do one more for this video, which is this beautiful little Jaguar. Um, it's an XE. She's got good tires. She looks good. A little concerned with the tow hook on the front because this is also supposed to be a run and drive. It's a cute little thing. It is a little 2.5 liter turbo. Great little get around town car for sure if you're into Jags. And I'm like this, man. I got a love-hate relationship with them because I know how problematic they can be, how temperamental they can be. At the same time, they just make phenomenal looking cars. They are good looking little cars. Look at this tiny little engine. Finally, a Jag that everyone can work on, right? That's what it looks like to me. It looks like something that just about anybody could get in here and work on. There's your exhaust manifold. Wow, that's a big, good lord. That is a huge catalytic converter. Yeah, I don't even want to know how much that thing costs. She looks good, guys. She does. She looks good. Let's see what the interior looks like. It is a small car. But it's a small car that feels big. It really is. The, the leg room back there is not going to be good, and I don't even want to try it. You can tell by how close that seat is. But 
we don't worry about other people's comfort. We worry about our own. And for everybody else, other than the people riding in the back, this is nice. Where's the... Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. She's got her keys, too. Both of them. How about that? The key band, it didn't catch these. These are nice-looking keys, too. Very premium. And two key fobs and a Jaguar keychain. Oh, man. Oh, man. She runs great. Low mile. Ooh, gearbox fault. Oh, she's stuck in neutral. So somebody has gotten under there. I don't know where. There's one of those pull things. Who knows where it is. But all these new cars have a little pull thing so you can force the transmission into neutral. And that's what somebody did to this. So it's definitely been towed. You can't even. That's not even adjustable. You cannot move that at all. Interesting. Is it in there? Ah, uh, and here's, here's what always worries me. I, when I see these, these concern me. These really concern me because it was recently in the service department for something. The gearbox fault is somewhat concerning, but not too concerning because it's obviously going to have a gearbox fault when it's stuck in neutral. So you would have to figure out how to put it back in park before you'd really be able to find out if the transmission in this is okay or if she's got some serious problems. This one is a gamble, man. It is, it could go either way. I mean, I would love to say that because it's only got 60 some thousand miles on the odometer that it's probably fine. But remember, it is a Jaguar. And because of that, uh, yeah, I'm not totally comfortable with this one. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get out of here. I want to thank each and every one of you for taking the time to watch my video. If you enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you to IAA for letting us come out and go through their yard. Till next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.